Automation is a critical aspect of any organization's digital transformation. And today, I'd like to take you on a journey. A typical journey starts off with very simple kinds of automation. And in this scenario, you're trying to replicate what a human might do. And these could be simple workflows that you automate, like data processing workflows, data QA workflows, and so on. There's no change to the automation process that is required other than just the replacement of mundane things. The more advanced versions of automation typically require you to take business-critical workflows and the need to scale and perform in order to achieve that, bringing in consistency. It makes you rethink what you need to automate differently if you did it with a machine as opposed to human workflows. Sometimes it's within an enterprise, sometimes it's across enterprises that you have to achieve this. And then at the last phase of automation, I would say this is your destination, is to bring about intelligence into the automation process. When I talk about intelligence, I'm not talking about necessarily bringing in AI. It could be, but in many cases, it's really the feedback loop that you bring in, a loop where you're trying to decide based on changes that happen in the decision-making process. Very often, the decision-making process itself could go into another automated set of tasks that take that as input and so on. So today, we're going to take a look at how RTS can enable you to build such systems very adaptive systems that can scale and be consistent, a level that humans can't achieve. But before we get there, let's start with some basics. What you're trying to automate is usually an expertise that someone has as a human playing a role. And in this case, I'm showing you a few examples of roles within the RTS ecosystem. Like for example, a system admin might care about how you install the software, patch the software, monitor them, and so on. Similarly, a data manager might care about how you aggregate data and bringing it in a regular fashion in a consistent manner and trying to repeat that process. Similarly, for content management. And then, of course, for decision makers, it could be that you want to automate the decision-making process for certain things that you have the expertise for, but you can now automate the system to do that. Data scientists can automate their analytic workflows. So if you take the first example of a sysadmin trying to do enterprise-level automation, trying to deploy, let's say, RTS Enterprise, if you have a simple system of an all-in-one system, you have Enterprise Builder, the command line version that you can use to automate. If you have a more complex system, an enterprise that's your centralized one that probably is networked together across your data center, it's more than the first one, which was a departmental one. This is a centralized system, like for your entire GIS needs. You could either use Chef for on-prem, or you could use uh, the command line versions of Cloud Builder if you're on the cloud, in the cloud platforms, or you could use the Cloud Builder, and you can use cloud formation templates, of course, if you're trying to do that. And then if you expand and try to build the geospatial cloud, interconnected systems, multiple GIS systems, but in a trusted manner, then of course you can use the Python API to do that. But it's not just about these things, it's also something more than that. You can also have hooks into events that are generated from the portal through webhooks. For if items are changed, if users are added or removed, or users come into a new group, you can get notified and you can call into external business systems. And like Jim said earlier, SOEs and SOIs are great ways to plug into the server, trying to react to the queries that are coming in or the responses that are given. And then, of course, there's distributed automation, I would say. It's a new class of automation that's enabled by distributed collaboration, where you connect these systems together, where there are individuals going into organizations and multiple organizations that are networked together. If you drop data in one place, they show up in another place. These are all kinds of technologies that are available within the RTS platform for you to enable this level of automation. Something new and exciting that we did recently was the ability to have notebooks within the platform, and you saw many examples of that today. As of the shipping software that we have today, you can execute these notebooks, and coming soon is the ability to schedule these notebooks at regular intervals. 
This is very powerful because a lot of these automation tasks can go into the notebook, and within the platform, you can schedule and execute them. So we'd like to showcase the capabilities of automation within the platform through two examples. The first one is what I would call as distributed automation. We've been working to recreate the scenario with our friends at the EPA. So EPA has lots of outdoor monitors that collect information, and they go into a centralized place like a cloud store. And from there, states pick that information at regular intervals. They do analysis, and they also share it upstream. And in order to achieve that, we'd like to show you through a demonstration. I'd like to introduce from the enterprise team, Indu and Bill, to go through the scenario. Indu? Thanks, Jay. Cal EPA collects air quality data from its outdoor monitors to oversee any potential health concerns for its residents. The state is also mandated to share a summary of this data with the federal EPA for compliance and further analysis. To achieve this, a distributed collaboration has been set up between the state and the federal EPA. Distributed collaboration allows sharing of data across organizations via replication. Today, let's automate this workflow using ArcGIS notebooks. Before we jump into the code, let's take a look at the monitors. This is a map of all the monitors distributed across the state. The monitors push their data to an AWS S3 bucket once every hour. In our Python code, we first download the current hour's data from all the monitors and load them as Pandas data frame. This is what the data looks like from a single monitoring station for a single hour. As you can see, this includes concentrations of pollutants like nitrogen dioxide, ozone, and particulate matter. Sometimes, values may be completely missing. We compute air quality metrics and augment it to the data. Features are generated and appended to the feature layers. The state is interested in knowing if any of its counties are at risk because of the increased pollutants. This is done by visualizing the data on a map color-coded to standard quality ranges, varying from good to hazardous. Monitor values are spatially joined with counties within the state to identify counties that are at risk because of increased pollutants. Reports are generated in the form of web map and dispatched to county supervisors. In order to share our analysis with the EPA as mandated, we share the curated data set with the collaboration group, which will replicate this, making it available to the federal agency. As I mentioned earlier, the monitors push their data once every hour. This means our entire workflow must run on an interval. Imagine running this notebook manually once every hour to keep up with the changing data. This is where the new scheduling feature of ArcGIS Notebooks is useful and can save you significant effort. As you can see, this notebook is already scheduled to run once every hour. You can also view the results of the previous runs. You can schedule a notebook by clicking on the Create Task button, entering the title, and optional input parameters. Your notebook can act on these parameters. For example, the notebook that we just saw can now download the data from a new S3 bucket and write the analysis to a different collaboration group without changing any code. Let's enter the start time and how often we want this schedule to repeat. In our case, once a day for a month. Multiple schedules uh, can be assigned for a single notebook. In this way, scheduled Python notebooks are a great tool to automate recurring data processing, analysis, and collaboration workflows to reduce human effort.